Good morning. I'm Gloria Keith with Action Speaks, and I'm here to continue our readings of research studies and history of giftedness. And this information is being read to you uh, to actually offer you authentication of my new book, Every Child Born Gifted by Gloria J. Keith. Okay, we will continue the study. They Won't Teach Me, The Voices of Gifted African American Inner City Students, When Who I Am Impacts How I Am Represented, Addressing Minority Student Issues in Different Contexts. And the book is, or the study is by Deborah Harmon, Geographical Code, 1 USA, the date of publication, January 1st, 2002. Publication, Roper Review, ISSN number 02783193. Over the weekend, as I was looking, uh, searching on the internet for more studies and research and history of giftedness, particularly dealing with African American or black Americans, I ran into a new website or a fairly new website by Dr. Joy Lawson Davis, Ensuring Equity and Excellence in Education for All. Uh, on her page she says, Welcome. It's exciting to have you join me on this new website. I'll use this site to offer opportunities for school district personnel, parents, colleagues, and other advocates of culturally diverse learners to have a forum for discussion of topics of issue of interest, topics of interest and concern to us all. On this site, I'll share readings PowerPoint presentations from selected workshops, videos, and other information of interest. I'll also encourage you to contact me to provide services to your schools, districts, or states through presentations, program evaluations, or other support. I am committed to helping schools and communities increase the number of African American, Hispanic, Native American, and other diverse populations receiving services through Gifted to demonstrate the potential. Let's work together to eradicate, to eradicate underrepresentation and underachievement of these students in schools in America and around the world. I love her opening statement, so I will be reading more of Dr. Joy Lawson Davis. She makes quite a few recommendations, which I will be checking into as we continue these readings and as I continue to finally publish my new book, Every Child Born Gifted. As we continue with, with Deborah Harmon's uh, text. Table 1 presents some of the characteristics and behavior of behaviors of ineffective teachers identified by these students. Further discussion with students reveal that most of the teachers considered to be ineffective did not explain concepts in a way students could understand, did not relate contents, contents or concepts to students in a meaningful way, relied on auditory teaching methods and gave instructions using language that was difficult to understand. Some of the students complained about the expectations of their teachers to be quiet to be quite quiet most of the time and to sit still at their desk. One student explained 
how it was necessary to move around a little bit while he was doing his work. Students reported that after they completed their work, it was very difficult to be still and they needed to move around so as not to be so as not to become bored. Some of the students complained that it was too quiet in their classroom and they could not understand why they why they could not talk quietly to their friends if they had completed their work. All of the students interpreted the, re the refusal of their teachers to accommodate their need needs as disrespect. Effective teachers. According to all of the students interviewed, effective teachers were present at both schools and included all races. Table 2 lists what students identified as the characteristics of effective teachers. The students described effective teachers as those who were able to teach them in ways they could learn. They were considered to be respectful and caring teachers who introduced new concepts in ways they could understand explaining the meaning of words. She, the teacher, was educating us. She just taught us and if you didn't understand it she would teach you to the point that you did. Charles, fifth grader. If students didn't understand something she, the teacher, would help them individually or in small groups until they did understand. Instead of just telling the class what to do, she wrote it on the board, Jamal, fifth grader. She would use interesting problem, problems, real problems, that all of us could understand, Stephen, fifth grader. The effective teachers employed a variety of teaching styles, differentiations, and use multicultural materials. She'd put you where you belong. She'd make you make sure you were in the math group you belong to and put you in higher groups that she knows that you can do. Charles, fifth grader. She would give me independent projects to do such as reading selected books and discussing them with her. Sade, fifth grader. I could read about people like myself and learned about different people of color in every subject. Keisha, fourth grader. We will be getting into the next session, uh, resources that was used in order to produce the study by Deborah Harmon. So, as it is, we have concluded for today, and we will read more to you in the next session. This is Gloria Keith with Action Speaks, reading research studies and history of giftedness, in particular concern for black Americans, gifted black Americans, and providing them with excellence education tools.